Good day everyone, I am Dr. Romel Reyes, a resident of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology of the Eastern Visayas Regional Medical Center and today, I will be presenting an instructional video on how to perform the Leupold's Maneuver. Leupold's Maneuver are four systematic steps in palpating the uterus through the abdomen in order to determine fetal presentation and position. This is usually performed at 24 weeks age of gestation when the fetal abdomen can already be palpated. Before the procedure, ensure the patient's privacy. Always remember to perform hand washing before and after handling the patient. Greet and introduce yourself to the patient to establish rapport. Explain the procedure to the patient. Use language or vocabulary that the patient can understand. Ask the patient to empty her bladder before starting the examination. Place the patient on a dorsal recumbent position or you can ask the patient to bend her knees slightly. This helps the woman to relax her abdominal muscles to enhance palpation. You could also place a pillow under the patient's head for comfort. Drape the patient appropriately to maintain privacy. Ensure to expose only the part needed for the procedure. Upon exposure of the abdomen, inspection is done. We then note for lesions, scars from previous operations like cesarean section or exploratory laparotomy, and we also note for cutaneous changes during pregnancy like serie gavidarum and linea nigra. Warm your hands by rubbing them together. This is to prevent tensing of the abdominal muscles. Cold hands can stimulate uterine contractions. Measure the fundic height. This is used to monitor fetal growth and amniotic fluid volume. This is done between 20 and 34 weeks age of gestation and is measured in centimeters. It is measured along the abdominal wall from the top of the symphysis pubis to the top of the fundus. The height of the uterine fundus correlates closely with gestational age in weeks. The first maneuver is the fundal grip. This maneuver assesses the uterine fundus. It permits identification of the fetal lie and determination of which fetal pool occupies the fundus. Stand on either side of the bed and face the upper part of the patient. Place your hands flat on her abdomen. Proper positioning of the hands ensure accurate findings. Palpate the superior surface of the fundus. Determine consistency, shape, and mobility. The fetal head is firm, hard, round, volatile, and mobile, while the buttocks will give you a sensation of a large nodular mass which is bulkier and softer. The second maneuver is the umbilical grip. Still facing the patient, place the palms on either side of the maternal abdomen and exert a gentle but deep pressure. This maneuver determines on which side is the fetal back or small parts. On one side, a hard resistance structure is felt, which is the fetal back. On the other side, numerous small irregular mobile parts are felt, which are the fetal extremities. During this maneuver, once we are able to identify the fetal back, we will be able to appreciate the fetal heart tones of the baby. Did you know that fetal heart tones are usually heard as early as 10 weeks when using a fetal doctor ultrasound and as early as 20 weeks in 80% of women when using a standard non-amplified stethoscope? The normal fetal heart tones ranges from 110 to 160 beats per minute. Now we proceed to the third maneuver, the Pollock script. This maneuver aids in the confirmation of the fetal presentation. Using the thumbs and fingers of one hand, gently grasp the lower portion of the maternal abdomen just above the symphysis pubis. Try to press the thumb and the fingers together. Determine any movement and whether the part is firm or soft. 
This maneuver determines if engagement of the fetal presenting part has occurred. If the presenting part is not engaged, a movable mass will be found, which is usually the head. The fourth maneuver is the pelvic grip. This maneuver helps determine the degree of descent. The examiner faces the mother's feet and the fingertips of both hands are positioned on other side of the presenting part. An inward pressure is exerted and then slided gouded along the axis of the pelvic inlet. Place one hand on other side of the lower pole of the uterus just above the symphysis pubis. Determine on which side is the cephalic prominence and correctly identify the fetal attitude. If the head presents, one hand is rested sooner than the other by a rounded body that is called the cephalic, while the other hand descends deeply into the pelvis. If the cephalic prominence is in the same side as the fetal small parts, then the fetal head is in a flex position. If the cephalic prominence is in the same side as the fetal back, then the head is in an extended position. Once you're done with the examination, explain the findings to the patient. If the patient has questions, entertain them and answer them accurately. Then thank the patient. Never forget to perform hand washing after handling the patient.